Segment 8 for the Breckenridge Design Project will be designing the kitchen. A look at the plan dimensions, place all of the cabinets, do the wall elevations and sections, create the island, and then finally look at the plan layout. The rendering of the kitchen is already contained in the design with a shed ceiling, and then the layout will create a view of the floor plan, combine it with the renderings, elevations, and schedule. As I mentioned, we're going to do section views and create the wall elevations for each of the walls and the island. So let's go into the program and take a look. In the floor plan view, the first thing I want to do for the kitchen is I'm going to highlight the room. And while the room is highlighted, I'm going to use this tool called Automatic NKBA Dimension and click on that. And that's going to place the dimensions for that room. I'm just going to clean up a few of these that I don't really care about just to be able to zoom in and see what our space looks like. But this is a quick way to get an idea of how much space we have. And along this wall, I have about 71 inches. And along this wall to the casing, we have just about 214 inches to do our design work with. As I switch over to the 3D view, you can see what the space looks like in 3D. And remember, this area in here has a shed ceiling. So I'm only looking at the dollhouse view. As I rotate around and zoom in, I'm going to begin by placing the cabinets back against these two adjacent walls. Using the base cabinet tool, I'm going to click and place in the corner. And then I'm going to click and place off to the side and one more off to the other side here. As I move back into the plan view, you can see the cabinets that have been placed. They have the labels. I'm just using a generic cabinet at this point. I'm going to create a 33 inch cabinet over here. And for this cabinet, notice my cabinets are actually bumping in three inch increments as I do this. And for this cabinet, I actually want this to be a custom cabinet and make it 20 inches. And if I open up the cabinet using Command E on the keyboard for Max, click the 20 inches and then I'll just slide that over and bump that. Let me just show you the defaults that I'm using for my cabinet settings. Underneath the general cabinet, first thing is is that my minimum resize increment is three inches. And to get that down to a 20 inch cabinet, of course you can override that by opening it up but if you are using custom cabinets, you could set that minimum resize to one inch. And then my minimum cabinet size is nine inches. You can go much smaller than that by opening it up. And I've also removed this setting for automatic fillers. And in the case where you may have a one or two or even three inch opening, if you have that automatic fillers checked, it's going to place a filler in there. I like to remove that because I like to be very precise. Those are the settings I have for my general cabinet. And then on my base cabinet, I've already chosen the materials and the hardware, door style. And this is just a custom cabinet. It's not manufacturer branded. I'm going to go through and set defaults for my wall cabinets and go through the details of it. But I knew in advance for this particular client that this was a setting for the base cabinets. So I've already set them. And as I begin designing, you can see the way these look. And in the 3D view, it already has all of the materials in place for the particular countertop and the hardware. And that's why they look the way they do when we begin placing these cabinets. I'll place two more base cabinets, one in this area over here, and then I'm going to give myself some space for a cook range, and I'll just exaggerate that a little bit so I can put my cook range in here. Now for the two cabinets that are adjacent to the cook range, I'm going to select both of these, open them up, and I'm going to choose that they have flat sides and select OK. That way the cook range will be, I like to do that when they're adjacent to an object like a cook range. In between those base cabinets, let's go into the library, browse down through the core catalogs, architectural appliances, and find our ranges. We have both the slide in and large. Select that, and I'm going to grab the one and a half range with feet and place that right in this area right here. I'm going to move this cabinet over temporarily. I need to resize a couple of these items. Browse down to my library, and in my personal library, I have saved off a folder for this plan called Breckenridge Appliances. I seem to use a lot of the same appliances, so I stick that in my client folder, and I'm just going to place the refrigerator kind of off to the side in this area. Back over in the floor plan view, the first thing I want to do is give myself a little bit of room here. I'm going to select these two items and just slide them over and I need this to be a 27 inch cabinet because I'm going to put a microwave in here. I'm going to grab the cook range and slide it back over and then I'm going to grab my other cabinet here and I want this to be a 33 inch cabinet. And again, I have this bumping out in three inch increments and I'm just going to snap that next to the range and now I can pull my refrigerator over and snap that next to the 
cabinet. One more item out of the library. I'm going to grab the flat hood and I'm just going to click and place that hood and slide it into place. There is a center tool. I may use the center tool and center that over the cook range and then I'll just kind of zoom out. In the 3D view you can get an idea of what's going on and using the floor camera specifically if I take a view inside the room this will give you an idea of what it looks like with the ceiling and why my cook hood is so large. A lot of times I like to design in the overview and in the elevation view. Let me zoom in here and use my wall cabinet tool and place a wall cabinet. And to begin with, let's look at setting the defaults for this cabinet. Let me just kind of zoom in here. In the rendering, you can see my upper cabinets have two different door styles. The upper style is a glass and then the lower style is solid. I'm going to go through and show you how to create that style in the cabinet. We'll go ahead and open that up and we'll just kind of go through the different settings that we have. So first of all, I'm going to set the box height to be 48 inches. Press the tab key. As I do that, the math for the floor to finish top changes. Under the box construction, I'm using a framed box. Inset doors. On the sides and back, notice that everything is currently grayed out. That's because it says default. I'm going to change that to custom. That allows me to come in and add new items. In this case, I'm going to add a auto right door and I'm going to set the dimensions to 15 and a half inches. You can see the update. I'm going to browse into the library and change the door style. If I use the same door style and I want to paint that glass, some doors paint with glass, others don't. And if you want to have a different door style, you need to use the library same for appliances. It's going to give you a message saying that usually this is reserved for appliances and I'm just going to kind of ignore this message in that case. I'm going to browse into the catalog and you can find the core catalog for cabinet doors in here and rectangular. I also have saved a door off in my door style. It's just a simple frame door that I know accepts glass. I'm going to accept that and the dimensions look okay for that information. On the door and door style, my hardware settings in here, everything looks good to me. And moving down to moldings, I want to have a crown molding and I want to have a chair rail molding. Select add new and I'm looking for a specific just simple flat profile and I can actually find that underneath my base moldings and I'm just going to use this rectangular profile for both the light rail and for the crown molding. And for the crown molding, let's set that to be two inches in height and I'm going to remove this retain aspect ratio and set this to be a half inch in width. And then from the vertical offset, I'm just going to use the same as the height. You may want to lower that in an actual design where that sits on the box a little bit. Add new again for the light rail and I'm going to use the same profile. And in this case, let's go ahead and say from the bottom, and you can see the update happening over here. For the light rail, let's change that to one and a half. And again, we'll use the same half inch. And in this case, we'll do the vertical offset from the bottom, and we'll use the exact same number as the height. And that needs to be in a negative number, so it moves it down towards the bottom of the box. You can see a preview of all of the changes that I've made. My doors still aren't glass, but I'll change that from the 3D view. Let's select OK, make those changes to the cabinet box. Let me zoom out here just a little bit and I'm going to use my material eyedropper off of the window and I'm going to click that using component mode in your lower left hand menu, component mode, so it will just apply it to that singular component. Once that change has been applied, I'm going to select the cabinet, make it my default cabinet, and now when I place more cabinets, let's ignore this message, for the wall, they will now have that same same property as the cabinet that we just did all of those changes to. Place a wall cabinet in the corner. Again, it's intelligent and knows to change to a wall cabinet. I'm going to select it and remove the glass door off of the top by simply clicking on the front of the door, pressing delete, and then on the opening that's left, I'm just going to click delete again. You see the preview of that cabinet with a single door. Moving over to the plan view, make a few changes to the cabinets. We'll slide this one over, make it 27 inches. Place one more wall cabinet off to the end and size that so that it matches up with the base cabinet below at 18 inches. On this cabinet I want it to be 26 inches and you notice when I resize it it's not going to allow me to get to that size easily so I'm just going to come in here and type in 26 
26, select OK, and now I'm going to bump that cabinet over to the end, and then two more cabinets on either side of the cook range. To make this easy for placement and sizing, I'm just going to use the copy and reflect in the lower left hand corner of your menu. Come around, get a visual cue off of the cook hood, and now that should match up pretty close. I need to place one more cabinet above the refrigerator. Let's do that in a wall elevation, and I'm going to use that tool and just create a elevation right through that wall. And from here, I'm going to use the wall cabinet tool and place the cabinet over the top of the refrigerator. In fact, let's just use the center tool, center that on the refrigerator, and then open up that cabinet. And first of all, let's set the height to be 18 inches and the width to be 48 inches to match the refrigerator. And we'll change the depth to be 24. The other cabinets are 102 floor to top. Clicking on the front of this cabinet, I want to change the door type, item type here, to be a top hinge door. And on the door and drawer panel, I need to change the door handle. Let me change that. It's a 48 inch cabinet. I'm going to set it in the middle. You can see the preview update up from the bottom at one. And then I'm going to browse into the library and choose to be a horizontal pull. Select OK. And then finally, I'm going to remove the molding off the bottom. And on that molding tab, I'm going to choose the second molding and press delete. You can see the update. And one more thing on the front of this cabinet, I'm going to specify the shelves and I'm actually just going to remove that shelf in the middle of that 18 inch cabinet. Select OK and close that and our cabinet should now be updated. Moving over to the 3D view you can see what the design is looking like. While I'm in this view I'm going to select two of the cabinets and change them to a bank of drawers. Simply click on both of those cabinets using the shift key. On the front of the door I'm going to come in and change that back to custom face again. Just below the drawer in that face item I'm going to select add new, choose the drawer face item, and then set the item height for that. And you'll get a preview update. And now I'm just going to select that face item for the door and choose the drawer. Select OK. And now you can see that update in 3D. On the base cabinet next to the cook range, I'm going to open that up and put a microwave inside of that cabinet. I'm going to select the drawer, choose the face item of appliance. I'm going to set the height to be 19.5. Notice that there's now a lock from auto resize. You can now lock your face items. I'm going to browse into the library, choose a generic microwave out of our architectural appliances folder. And I'm just going to use a large built-in microwave. Now something about these um, items will fill your space. And so it's important to get the exact dimensions if you're using a man. And you can use the manufacturer website to find exact dimensions in this case for a particular product. They give you a nice diagram and you can make sure that your opening size fits the dimensions and be exact because the program will fill that space automatically for you in most cases. Back into the specification, I've changed that to be a microwave and on this face item I'm going to change that back to being a drawer. Select OK and now you can see the preview update and again you can use a material painter and come in here and apply that on a particular item. On these base cabinets, I want to put an edge profile on the countertop. I'm going to shift select all of those cabinets and open them up. Underneath the moldings panel is where you apply those edge profiles. You'll find some in the core catalog libraries. You'll find quite a few more in the bonus libraries. Those are available on the 3D library and you can download those and add to your collection. I'm going to select that profile, accept the dimensional defaults that will come in with a different color and I'll just use the eyedropper and apply that and if I zoom in here a little bit you'll be able to see that edge profile on our countertop edge. My next step is to place the backsplash. In the cabinet properties there is a setting to in this case for the wall cabinet place the backsplash to base below. I don't have that checked. I also don't have a backsplash on the base cabinets. I'm going to use a tool in Chief Architect Hall the custom backsplash and I'm just going to click on the two walls that I want the backsplash backsplash on and that will automatically generate it. This is a backsplash that you can edit and pull up. I'm going to do some more editing in that in the elevation view. The material that it picks up comes from my default countertop material that I've used. In the library you'll find underneath the bonus catalog which you can download from our 3D library. If I scroll down and find our tile there's a number of tiles that are available and you can use those or you can sometimes go to the website. They do need to be a very good picture to have the tiling when you apply that to a larger area. In my favorites folder, I'm going to find one of the tiles that I like and I'm going to select that and apply that onto the backsplash. 
that I want. I'm going to go back in and generate a wall elevation and maybe I'll even use the cross-section camera here so I can get the wall above rather than just the main wall. As you'll see in this elevation it will get the attic wall. I'll use my zoom tool and I'm just going to kind of isolate the area of the kitchen. And the first thing is, is you're going to notice my tile pattern on this is a gigantic honeycomb. I'm going to use the tool called Adjust Material Definition. I'm going to modify that material so that it looks good in my wall elevation. On the pattern panel, you can choose the style of the pattern, and here are the defaults that you can choose from. None of those seem to match the stone type material that I have selected. I'm going to choose the custom pattern file, and then browse out and find the one that may fit. There's a stone category out here. Once I choose that, the drop down gives you different previews, and there's actually a preview here that I like, and I'm going to set the scale of that to about half of what is on there and just press the tab key. I get a preview of what that looks like and then I'll close the dialog and update that pattern. Next I'm going to pull the backsplash up to the very top of the attic wall where the windows are. And I'm going to grab the diamond and I'm just going to pull that up even with the lower section of the beam. And now I've got my main backsplash. And that's a lot of the same backsplash. If you take a look at my completed rendering, what I've done to break that up is added a secondary backsplash in two different locations behind the cook hood. And I'm going to do that work again using the same tool in the elevation view using the backsplash tool. But instead of click to place, I'm going to click and drag this backsplash out and then I can assign the material to it and shape it. I'm going to open up the properties of that backsplash and I'm going to change the material layers. Here's where you can change the thickness of it. My other backsplash might have been also a half inch. I'm just going to make this a little bit thicker so that I can select it and it will stand out. If you want to be exact with your materials you'd actually pull down the other main backsplash and shape around that. So if you want to be accurate you'll need to go through that work. I've got that backsplash with the position of it. I'm going to use the tile called modern brick and now I'm going to just pull this down a little bit lower just above the light rail and then again using the material adjustment I'm going to change the way that pattern looks and first I'm going to change the horizontal offset to be six inches and then on the general panel I'm going to go through and change the material a little bit. For the lines I don't want the to be quite as dark so I'm going to select that. I'm going to use more of a muted gray color for that. And then the type of texture I want is more of a brick style. So I'm going to choose that. And then for the height, I'm going to give it one and a half inches and then adjust the length a little bit. And then the depth and then the mortar width, I'm going to use also the same information here. You can see the preview of that. Also, sometimes I like to come to the properties. You can change the way this previews. You can change it to a ray trace view, or you can also change it to a, a different type, but you can change your view type over here to be a vector view, or you can also change it to ray trace, and that will take your properties and then um, any of the information you've set here, you can kind of get a mini preview of the way that's going to look. So I like to use that quite a bit. I've changed the texture on that, and that will now update, and I think that line feels a little harsh on the line style, so I'm just going to open this back up, and on the line style, I'm going to change it from black, and I'm just going to use maybe a uh, same gray that I selected for the darker line. And once I've got that the way I like it, I'm just going to grab it, make a copy of this, slide it up just a little bit here, and then I'm going to do some shaping on this. I'm going to pull it up approximately the bottom of the windows or the top of the crown, and then pull this side down a little bit. And then I want to match the slope of the roof or the beam, and that may be easiest to just do and snap it up to the top, and I'll pull the top down to the edge of the beam here, and then I'll pull it back down to the top of the crown or the bottom of the windows. Back in the 3D view, you can see the additional backsplash material and it helps perhaps break up one large backsplash. Again, here's a rendering of it. This is where I've ray traced it and added the accessories in and the lights in. So you can see the effect of it and maybe help sell the job a little easier with the way that's visual. The next portion of the video, I'm going to look at our wall elevations and the sections. I'm going to do the wall elevation on the main wall and actually make that a section view. And then on the side wall, I'll also do the wall elevation. And then when we do the island, after I complete that, I'll come back actually and do a section through that island. For the 
the main wall elevation, actually I'm going to use a cross-section camera because the wall elevation will only get the lower portion of the wall. It won't get the upper portion where the windows are. And so I'll use that tool. And for the side wall elevation, we'll be able to use the wall elevation for that. And let's go ahead and go back into the program and take a look. To begin with, let's use our wall elevation and just shoot a wall elevation through the main wall. And obviously it's missing the upper windows because wall elevations isolate that. You'll find a tool to do your dimensioning called NKBA Automatic Dimensions. I typically always use that to get started. It's very quick. Make sure your annotation set is at a half inch scale or the NKBA annotations. I'm going to select that and let that generate the dimensions automatically for the design. And these are dimensions you can easily come in and clean up. All you have to do is click on the dimension line, remove or add to those dimensions as you need to. Let's close this view and go back into the cross-section view that we already had open for editing the backsplash and do our dimensioning in here because I want that upper section where it shows the windows. The automatic dimension, if you zoom out, and I've just done that section, is really too much to try and figure out what's going on. It's going to run dimensions um, in several places. So I'm going to manually dimension this and it's good to know the process. I've created in my annotation sets a few different annotations. The program ships with the NKBA annotations and what I've done here is I've just made a copy of those and to begin with I'm going to use the cabinet boxes and just to give you an idea what I've done here with my dimensions if you open up my dimension defaults and you look at my NKBA cabinet boxes all I've really done here is change what it's going to locate to be a quick and easy way to do my dimensioning and I don't have to change things so it's going to pick up the cabinet sides and it's going to pick up the casings if you download this sample plan you can easily easily export my annotation sets and just borrow from it if you find that helpful. So I've got my annotation set to cabinet boxes. I'm now just going to run my dimension line right through these cabinet boxes and I'm just going to run it actually all the way to the wall and just pull that down. So step one is to get my cabinet boxes. I do the same thing for the wall boxes. I'll just for the purpose of this video kind of focus on the lower section. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change that annotation set to get my appliance center lines. And again, all I did was change what is being located. In this case, it's going to be fixtures. Change my dimension style to the centerline tool. And then again, I'm just going to come through here and draw a line and pick up the centerline mainly for the appliances. Pull this down. And then I might also use my centerline. And oftentimes I have my crosshairs on, but not for videos. And I'll just modify that cross that centerline so it comes up to the appliance. And that's probably a style thing that you can just set up and determine how you like to have that. Now the final dimension, I could do it with the centerline tool and just use the end-to-end -end dimension, but I also created a wall annotation set, so it just grabs the sides, and I'm just going to go wall to wall here and pull that over so that we get that wall dimension and we'll just pull that down. And if you zoom in, it looks like when I grab that wall, let's go ahead and select the dimension. I'm just going to pull that over so that it gets the edge and the other dimension. I got an extra wall thickness for that pantry and same thing for the cabinet. And I'm just going to pull that down. Also, my cabinet picked up the extra dimension for the corner and there may be a little bit of cleanup that you need to go through and add to these dimensions. Um, when you select the dimension, you can grab the diamond and either either pull it off or add it on there and then you can kind of move your dimensions around to the style that you prefer. Those dimension arrow styles can be changed and that's probably good enough for my dimensions on the top. And once you finish dimensioning it, I added the vertical dimensions, uh, some dimensions for the wall cabinets, also a pitch indicator above the beam to show pitch on the beam. And so this is kind of what it looks like when it's completed. Again, that's in the sample plan. In the floor plan view, you can see that camera. And I like to modify those cameras when I send it out to the floor plan. And I'll give it a name. In this case, I'm going to call it K1 for the wall elevation. And then I will basically change the layout call out size. And I'm going to make that a little bit more uniform. If you have a lot of callouts, you may want to leave that automatic because it then will adjust for your text and won't crop it. My callout arrow is large and it's filled. The other thing I often do is name my cameras because I may get a lot of cameras in there and it's helpful when you're trying to figure out if you're using the project browser to manage your cameras. It's not filled in right now because that camera is still active when you toggle over there. The next section I want to do is I'm going to use a wall of 
elevation because I don't really care too much about this upper attic wall. And I'm going to just draw the wall elevation through here. You're going to see a couple of lines shooting out. And if you go back into the floor plan view, these lines, that's a room divider that you're seeing. And the way that section's coming through there into the living room area, that's why you're seeing that when you run that wall elevation. Since this is just the wall elevation, what I can do now is use my automatic NKBA dimensions and then do some cleanup with those. And I'm just going to come in here and I'll highlight the dimension and just pull off some of these that I don't really care about so that it looks good. And then just slide this up a little bit. The dimensions are going to pick up the toe kick. And a lot of times what I'll do is just do that on one side. So I'm just going to remove that. The end-to-end -end wall elevation may be not as appropriate since there's a, actually an attic wall that goes up in here. The attic wall has prevented my line, my extension line, from being displayed. And I'm just going to use the line tool and basically come in and draw a line up for that. And I may need to zoom in and then align that and then I'll just create a copy of that and pull it off to the other side and I may need to color match it as well. That's the reason that extension doesn't, it doesn't get drawn in there but it's quite easy to add your own. Once those dimensions are cleaned up again I'll go back into the floor plan view and change that camera just like we did before. Give it a uh, something descriptive and then on the plan display, I'll just give this K2, remove the automatic, and give it a 14 inch. And that way it's a very similar size. You can still move these around in floor plan view. As long as you don't push it through the cabinets or pull it off, then you can kind of play it out. Somewhat of a visual thing, but I like to always do this. If you select this cabinet, notice my label's being hidden by that upper cabinet. I'm going to click on that label. I'm going to hold my control key down and pull it down. And on the wall cabinet, notice if I zoom in, there's a handle right here. And then there's a rotate. And just kind of clean that up. If you look at my completed plan, I've added all of the callouts the same size. I put my dimensioning in here. And I'm going to cover some more of that towards the end of the video. But I'm going to move on next and address the kitchen island.